it's great to see you today. I'd like to welcome you to New Life Service on Sunday the 15th of November. I know uh, we're not meeting together, but we're just meeting in our homes and I just pray and trust that we'll have a great time together as we worship God. Steve's going to be leading us, Steve Brown's going to be leading us in the time of worship and um, we're going to be have the, Matt Redding's going to be preaching God's word to us today and also um, Andy Orman's going to be leading us in the time of communion. I was just reading this just before I kind of came to record this and it said this, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God and everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know that we love God's children if we love God and obey his commands. Loving, God's means keep, loving God means keeping his commands and his commands are not burdensome. Burdensome, For every child of God defeats this evil world and we can achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I just want to tell you today here that we have we have defeated this world, not through anything that we have done, but because of the blood of Jesus shed on the cross at Calvary. And we just thank God this morning that actually through the blood of Jesus, we are on the winning side. We are victorious. You might not be living victorious, you might not feel victorious, you might not feel like that at the moment, but listen, that does not affect uh, where we are positionally. Positionally, uh, we are victorious, we are on the winning side. And let's just declare that today. Let's declare that we are victorious through Christ Jesus. And as we come and praise God this morning, that we have the victory in Jesus, we have the victory. So Father, we just pray this morning, as we come and as we worship you, we pray that you will lift your name on high, and Lord, that we would know that we have the victory today in you through the blood of Jesus and we just thank you for that in Jesus name we pray amen okay let's stand let's get ourselves sorted let's worship God in spirit and in truth and then we'll move on to what we're going to be doing next but let's worship him because he is worthy of praise and glory amen see you in a minute
give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to know just what to do. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all oh my days, I will love you, Lord. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Well, thanks, Steve, for leading us in that time of worship. What a great time of worship that was. Uh, as you know, Karen and I were down in Kent, and today, we had planned to go and see my sister and to go and see my mum and dad. However, there was, a, there was a big accident up on the M2, so we decided just to stay here, stay around here, and went to Whitstable, and we had a really fantastic time. And although we didn't, plan, didn't do the things that we planned to do, it was great because God was really in, us, in it and was with us as we spent time together. And that was, God knew that was just what we needed for today. What an amazing, Thing that was and we just I just thank God for that because God knows what's best for us God knows he knows the beginning from the end he knows what we need today he knows that sometimes when sometimes I need to be with people sometimes I need to be quiet sometimes I need to be uh, flat on my face sometimes I need to be shouting and rejoicing sometimes I need to be laughing sometimes I need to be crying because he knows exactly what I need at that exact moment and you know it was so good to know today that, as I just read in that scripture right at the beginning, that we have the victory in Christ Jesus. And it's easy to look at our circumstances, to look at those and to feel defeated, to feel defeated and to feel like, oh my goodness, and feel worthless and just feel like, that, 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 what's, what's the point? What's the point of going on? What's the point of this? What's the point? What's the point? Well, it says here, for every child of God defeats this evil world and we, re we achieve this victory through our faith. We've been talking about the armour of God and we know about the shield of faith and we've heard that one to, fight, to extinguish the fiery arrows of the evil one. But it's also, not only is it actually a, a defensive weapon, but it's also an offensive weapon. The Romans used their faith as an offensive weapon. And today, let's just not just use our faith just as, as a form of defence from the fiery arrows of the enemy, but use our shield of faith, the faith and that also it's a gift of faith, it's a spiritual gift. There is a, the gift, the spiritual gift of faith. And um, we just need to ask God to impart that spiritual gift of faith to us today so that we can be, uh, so that we can use our faith as an offensive weapon. So when we pray for people, we pray with faith. We pray, you know, we don't need much faith. The Bible says all we need is a mustard, a mustard seed of faith. And mustard seeds are very small. All we need is a mustard seed of faith, and then we can we can say this mountain, you be moved. That mob would get up, move to the sea. We can say just with a mustard seed of faith. So today, let us believe what God says that we achieve this victory. How through our faith. So, Father, I pray today that you would impart the gift of faith to us, the gift of faith to each and every one of us right now that we would just grow stronger in your in your name, that we'd grow more like your son Jesus, that we'd be more the people you've called us to be, that we would grow in faith, that we would be a people of faith and, uh, and we'll be known for our faith in you, our trust in you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, it's my privilege to introduce Matt now. Matt's going to bring the word of God to us and... Um, and so I just pray that, it, uh, that today we will be receptive to God's word. So Father, we just pray as the word of God comes to us now, we just pray, Lord, that you'd speak to us today. You'd speak to us through your word. And Lord, it will build us up and help us to be more like your son, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Okay, Matt, take it away. Thanks very much. Hi to all at New Life Church. Um, in 
Morpeth and Moors End. And yeah, I'm glad to be here speaking to you today. And I hope you hope you're well. I hope you're you're full of peace, full of full of joy, even in challenging circumstances as we are now. And um, and we'll talk about the belt of truth today. We've been the last few weeks we've been talking about the armour of God and um, and this is what Ephesians 6 says about the armour of God. Finally, be strengthened in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Clothe yourselves in the full armour of God so that you will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armour of God, so that you may be able to stand your ground on the evil day, and having done everything, to stand. Stand firm, therefore, by fastening the belt of truth around your waist. That's what I'm going to talk about today. By putting on the breastplate of righteousness, by fitting your feet with the preparation that comes from the good news of peace, and in all of this, by taking up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Wow. Putting on the armour is something we get to do ourselves. It doesn't say, God, will you put the armour on me? And I've prayed that prayer before. But actually, we're empowered by God in this. We put on his strength according to his measure and not our measure. We will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Not might be able to. We will, we will be able to. And with the shield of faith, every single fiery dart which gets fired at you, you can extinguish them. Wow. You see, that'll play havoc with some people's theology, their way of thinking, their way of viewing the world, even from a Christian perspective. All the fiery darts. How we, how we think and we speak about our circumstances, whether it's challenges, attacks, or just difficulties that come up in everyday life. How we think about those things determines our outcomes. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. It's Colossians. It's foundational to live in a new creation life and to step in into the fullness of God. The fullness of life that Christ has got for you, that he's opened up for us. You see, we get saved by believing in Jesus and we get free by believing like Jesus. Putting on truth inevitably leads to a change in perspective. What direction are we seeing things from? Are we looking from where we're seated in heavenly places or are we looking from an earthly perspective and therefore from a limited outlook? What's more true to us? You see, in times of challenge, that's when we get to realise what is more true to us. Is it what we notice more, you know, that's when we notice it. When the car breaks down, when we're, when we're waiting for medical results, when, we're, when we've got no money coming in. You see, those times we notice, how full are we of peace and hope, or how much are we worrying? And truth is central to all of this. There's no condemnation if you're worrying in those circumstances. We've all been there. But some people are getting free from systematic worry today. In this message, some people are going to get freedom from that. Your imagination is going to be set free from imagining what might happen, all that worry. 90% of what we worry about doesn't even happen. What's going to happen in some people today is you're going to start to, to actually imagine what happens when God shows up, when things go well, when the positive things happen, instead of constantly thinking and dwelling on those 
things that aren't necessarily going to happen. They're just worry. And some people are um, going to go really deep into that thought. Imagining what might happen if God fully shows up. Truth. The Greek word aletheia, probably not saying it right, I'm no Greek scholar, but aletheia is the word used for truth in this passage and others as well. See, how do we practically put on a belt of truth? What do we do to do that? You know, what sort of belt is it? Is it a trousers falling down belt? I've got my, my, my belt to stop my trousers falling down. And you, you see some people walking around who probably need a belt these days. Um, with their trousers sort of halfway down their legs. It's, is it that sort of belt? Is it a workman's tool belt that we can, we can hang things off of? Is it more like a weightlifter's belt? Well, the, literally, the verse actually means we gird our loins with truth, we wrap round truth around those vulnerable parts of ourselves. That's what the truth is for in this instance. And that's how we get strengthened in his mighty power. That's in verse 10 about being strengthened in his mighty power. We're strengthened because we've wrapped ourselves, protected ourselves in the vulnerable places with truth. And that's why in our weakness, he's made strong in us. It's not by chance, it's by the fact that we have deliberately put truth around those areas of our life which might be vulnerable. Vulnerable to worry, vulnerable to, to attack, vulnerable to all of those things. But we have a protection and it's God's truth. See, putting on truth isn't the same as mental assent. When we agree with something and we say, oh yeah, yeah, I can agree, that's true. You know, we read in the Bible something and we, we mentally um, agree with it. And we say, yes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It says that in the Bible. So I believe it. It's true. But it's not necessarily straight away affecting our life and being outworked. Because putting on truth isn't the same as reading something or agreeing with it. You see, John 8.32, Jesus doesn't say, then you'll agree with what's true and the truth will make you free. And nor does he say you'll read true things. And the truth will make you free. You know, that will make you free. You see, those things are a good start, but we have to take steps into freedom. And to do that, we have to know the truth. We have to live it. We have to experience it. John, um, in his letters, talks about walking in the truth, walking out that truth, walking it through. And that's the, that's the context that Jesus is talking about when he says, the truth will make you free. You see, we can't walk out that truth if our goal is something different to what God's goal in us, for us is. His goal for us is freedom. The truth will make you free. If our goal is different, if our goal is comfort, if our goal is, is our own personal sense of safety, um, sometimes you see an injection of truth into an area of life can feel uncomfortable. And because if we've been deceived in that area, then that, that injection of truth into it won't feel safe and it won't feel comfortable. That's not the aim. The aim is our ultimate freedom. This is what Jesus said in John 8. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you really are my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we're Abraham's dis descendants and we've never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? And Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son, a son belongs to it forever. Sons and daughters, that's who you are. And you know, it says, we're no longer slaves. Sons and daughters is what we are now. And Jesus went on to say this, 
So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Holding to teaching, knowing the truth, experientially knowing, not just thinking or agreeing with, and that truth is setting us free. You see, embracing a lifestyle of truth is not just about not lying. It's, it's not just about gaining knowledge of what's true from the Bible. Truth is walked out. It's what John was talking about in his third letter. He says, it gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. Truth is walked in, not just mentally assimilated. We start by thinking differently. Yes, that is true. But it leads to outward transformation. It doesn't stay in our head. This is what Jesus said when he knew his time on earth was coming to a close. It's in John 14, 16 and 17. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. The Spirit will be in you. Jesus goes on to say this in John 16, 13. When he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. So thinking about how we put on the belt of truth, we walk out that. We gain and assimilate that truth from God by experiencing truth through intimate connection with the Holy Spirit. It cannot, we cannot put on the belt of truth as just an idea. We have to put on the belt of truth in an intimate connection with the Holy Spirit. You know him. He lives with you and will be in you. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we, we welcome you now. We ask you to, to guide us into a greater experience of your truth for us, for our friends, for our neighbours, for our families. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and fill us, to walk with us, to guide us, You know, the amount of truth that we get to walk in is unlimited. Entirely unlimited. He will guide us into all truth. He will. Not he might guide us into all truth if we do the right things, if we do this, we do that. No, he will. It takes time. He's got the whole of eternity. But that's where we're heading, into all truth. If we think that we've shortcutted eternity and we've got it now, some people act like that, like they've got all truth now. If you don't agree with me, you must be wrong. The Holy Spirit's guiding us and he's, not, he's patient in a way that we struggle to be sometimes. So truth, what is truth? If we consider truth and we mix it up with facts or opinions, then we're deceived. See, facts are observed and they're catalogued. Truth's experienced, it's walked out. You can't always put a number on it. Truth requires something of us. It requires that change that leads to freedom when, when the Holy Spirit opens up truth to us in an area, that's why I said it's not always comfortable. He's opening up areas in you as much as you'll let him. And my prayer for you is that you would embrace the truth he's opening up, those, those uncomfortable things that he's bringing up. Because he's doing that not to condemn, 
not to hurt, but to bring you into freedom. The truth will set you free. You see, opinion isn't truth either. That postmodernist idea, that concept of relative truth, oh, you know, what's true for you, what's true for me, that's not truth, that's opinion. And it's good to be clear about that. You see, the idea of, that truth is grounded in subjective opinions, that will lead us a long way from the truth. You know, everyone has got their opinion of what's true and what's not true, and that's fine. Um, neither of them, you know, if, if, if I disagree with somebody and I think something's true and they think something's different is true, we're probably not both right. And in reality, probably both of us are at least a little bit wrong. It's very rarely that one person's entirely right and another person's entirely wrong. But neither of our opinions is truth. And when we put too much pride in our opinions, we get into problems. You've just got to, you've just got to look at the unity that gets broken by putting, attaching pride to opinions. And you see all the church splits of the last 500 years in, in the Protestant part of the Christian church. You see, truth that's experienced and that's walked out in humility and in fellowship with the Holy Spirit was being replaced by opinion and pride of being in the right. And that became more important than love, than love for our brothers and sisters. You see, truth is never more important than love. It's impossible for truth to be more highly valued than love. Because yes, the, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, but God is love. So three things in summary. The first one is the truth sets us free. See, when we don't have freedom in an area, then, or we're not hope-filled in an area, it's time to get a beliefs check in that, in that part of your life. And to start thinking, well, I'm believing something which is not true, which is why I'm not free, not completely free in my emotions, not completely free in my thinking, not completely free in other ways. See, people listening today are gonna to get, going to get free from ideas and free from habits of thinking which have kept them down for decades. There's a, there's a grace today for that to happen. And Holy Spirit, we, we ask you to, to breathe on that word and to bring freedom where there hasn't been hope for particular parts of life. And we pray for, for you, Spirit of Truth, to come into those areas and bring a fresh perspective. Second thing, we are the arbiter of what is true. The Holy Spirit is. He will guide us into all truth. Not, we will tell him what we think is true. And the third thing is, we wrap ourselves up with truth and that protects us when we're vulnerable. That girding our loins, that belt of truth that goes around us and protects us. If you want protection through the difficulties of life, through the, through the trials of life, which will come, then wrapping yourselves up during the good times and protecting yourself with the truth of what God says about you, about what he says about your circumstances and you start to get that in you and start to walk it out so it becomes actually experiential truth not an idea that's how you're going to get through those times and be more than a conqueror as you come out of them i bless you in jesus name thank you for listening well matt what a great word from god thank you so much for doing that for spending time and for for seeking god's face for us today Pray that, uh, that Matt's words will resonate with you and that they would, they would do you good and that you'd grow more and more in love with Jesus. Well, I'd like to introduce you to the next section of our service today and we're going to be having communion. So if you want to get your, your bread and your wine together, that'd be great. 
and then we can break bread together, uh, which will be fantastic. But as we do so, the band are going to lead us in a song, King of Kings, a beautiful song called King, King of Kings. And uh, that is what he is. Jesus is the King of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And as we break bread today, we're going to break bread and just give thanks to the King of Kings for everything that he has done for us. Okay, so band are going to lead us and then we'll, and Andy will then lead us in communion. So thanks everyone, that will be great. Amen. This is the body, this is the blood, broken and poured out for all of us. And in this communion, we share in his love. This is the body, this is the blood, I will remember everything, Lord, that you've done for me, I won't take for granted the sacrifice that set me free. I hunger and thirst for your love. Come feel me today. This is the body. This is the blood. Broken and poured out for all of us. And
church and um, it's not stopping us from having communion it's not stopping us from praising and worshiping God and it's not stopping us from hearing the word of God either and when I was thinking about how to introduce um, coming around the table this morning and communion this morning I thought about two things and the word drama because there's two ways that God could have played this it could have played it out where you could you would have seen God sat on the throne in robes of white. You'd have seen the angels on white stallions coming down from heaven, waving their swords. You could have seen um, an image of Satan on his back uh, being defeated. And you could have seen the angels in heaven praising and worshipping and, and glorifying God. 
you could have he could have played that that role he could have played that drama out but instead he chose his son Jesus to die on the cross he didn't want the blaze of glory he didn't want the wow let's make a film about this let's make a film of that because it's wonderful it's spectacular you know Satan's been defeated God's on the throne he is on the throne Satan has been defeated but it wasn't in a blaze of glory it was on the cross so when you think that God sent his son Jesus who when he went to the cross probably had a busted lip he had a crown of thorns put on his head probably had black eyes the props that was used was a wooden cross the spear that jabbed into his side the blood that was shed by him not by Satan you didn't see Satan it was by him he was the sacrifice the fact that these Roman soldiers were at the foot of the cross at Jesus feet rolling dice for his garments it wasn't the whole blaze in all glory redemption the forgiveness of sins it was painstaking and I just want us to think about that this morning you know God could have had a brilliant fantastic um, redemption where as I say white horses and angels and You'd see God sitting on the throne, sitting on his back. But God didn't want that. God wanted us to recognise the pain and the suffering that God and Jesus went through. God went through that pain of Jesus, his son, having to die on that cross. And he wanted us to see the pain and the sacrifice that he made so that we can be forgiven for the wrong things and the sins that we commit and we've done wrong. So as we come around the table of the Lord this morning, I just want to read from Hebrews chapter 10, starting from verse 14. And it says, Because by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about the first he says this is the covenant i will make with them after that time says the lord i will put my laws in their hearts and i will write them on their minds then he said their sins and lawless acts will be remembered no more and where those have been forgiven there is no longer any sacrifice needed for sin and so by Jesus dying on the cross, the humiliation, the pain, the suffering that Jesus had to go through, that God had to go through by sending his son Jesus. That's why we come around the table of the Lord. That is why we take communion now. That is why we use the wine to think about the blood that Jesus had to shed for us, the bread for his body broken and what he had to go through and you know just before Jesus died didn't he and before he went to trial they had the last supper with his disciples and when they went for the last supper Jesus took the bread and said take this this is my body broken for you eat this in remembrance of me And then in the same way, he took the cup and said, this is my blood shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Yeah, Heavenly Father, I just pray and I just thank you, Lord, that, Lord, the sacrifice 
that you made, Lord, wasn't in a place of glory. It wasn't you sitting on a throne. It wasn't uh, white stallions coming down from heaven in a blaze of glory. But, Lord, it was humiliation. Lord, your son, you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. He was humiliated that we could live forever in heaven. And, Lord, that through that sacrifice that we are forgiven for the wrong things and the sins that we've committed, Lord. And so I just praise you and I just thank you, Lord, right now for what you did at Calvary by sending your son for Jesus suffering on the cross, not in a blaze of glory to defeat Satan, but by humiliation. And so I just pray that, Lord, as we've taken the bread and we've drunk the wine and we've thought about your body broken and your blood shed on that cross for us, I just pray right now that you'll just guide and lead us, that you'll just help us to understand and realise the sacrifice that you made, that, Lord, we are forgiven. You remember none of our sins, Lord. And so I just pray, and I just ask that you'll be with us, Lord, now. Guide and lead us, Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And just before I go, I just want to leave you with this question. And it's this, how do you respond to God's plan of salvation? How do you respond to God's plan of salvation? Amen. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> thanks Andy for that. And thank you for Matt for sharing God's word and Andy for the for communion. You know, we're just coming to the final part of our service where we're just going to just finish it off. And... Um, you know, when Jesus, just before Jesus left this earth, <clears throat> he breathed on these followers and he said, <sighs> receive the Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and I just pray right now, I just breathe on us now. <sighs> we say, receive the Holy Spirit right now, receive the Holy Spirit. Let's just open ourselves right now to receiving more of the Holy Spirit, receiving the Holy Spirit right now so that we can go and do the things that God has called us. Remember it. <clears throat> All authority has been given to him. And he has given that to us. He tells us that in Matthew 28. And our job is to go out into the world. To go out. To make disciples. Not to make converts. But to make disciples. To make disciples. To see them grow. To see them become come to the fruition of faith. So that they can be multiplied. They can then sow into other people's lives. So receive the Holy Spirit right now. Come on let's just receive right now. Let's just receive right now, Holy Spirit. We just say, Lord, more of you. More of you right now, Lord. More. Increase what you're doing, Lord, in us right now. Increase what you're doing, Lord. Increase, increase, increase. And I pray, Lord, as we finish today, Lord, that we will continue to go from strength to strength. We'll grow more and more in love with you, Jesus. That we'll, be, we'll grow stronger and more powerful in the things of God. Lord, that we'll be bolder as we share your word with people. Lord, I pray that we would, you'd give us, give us see, we'd see signs and wonders following the preaching of your word. Lord, you'd help us to pray for people. You'd help us to know what to say. You'd give us words of knowledge and wisdom and you'd increase our faith today. Lord, that when we go out, when we open our mouth, we expect things to happen. We expect people to get saved. We expect people to get healed. We expect good things to happen. And we ask these things now in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Listen, we'll take care. God bless. And we'll see you again next week or next Sunday for our service. Or if you'd like to join on, on, on a Monday, um, we'll be doing, I'll be doing the devotion, which we'll be continuing to do every day, or Monday through to Saturday, um, which you'll be more than welcome to, to come and have a listen in, to comment, to share, to like. And same the same the service, comment, share, like. That would be great. So get the word out there so that people will know what we're doing and people get to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Listen, take care, God bless, have a great week, and we'll see you next time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.